Hello, StarCraft fans! This is Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another edition of One Trick Wednesday! For those of you who are unfamiliar, this is a compilation of games where my subscribers do a challenge, which is voted on by the other subscribers at a straw poll near you. There's a link in the description for the, uh, the uh, challenge in about a month, because I do these every other week. And the next challenge is already spoken for. Alright, so at the end of the cast I will tell you what that is. But let's get right on into this one, which is Infested Terrans Only. CLSS has pretty much stolen my thunder by going, Hello, StarCraft fans. Armelius responds, Hello, hello. And this first one of this One Trick Wednesday will be between CLSS and Armelius on Proxima Station. Alright, bottom left corner of the map we have the Red Zerg player, Kuls, or CLSS. Who I assume is going for the Infested Terran Challenge. Considering the fact that he said hello StarCraft fans like I do. And in the top right side of the map we have the Blue Zerg player. It is Armelius. Armelius here has his pool done. Very nearly done. And there it is. Extractor finished as well. And Extractor Hatch. Here from CLSS. So he uh... I don't know why he's so delayed with his spawning pool. What is he doing? There it is. It is coming up now at about 17 supply, so not too weird. His opponent is one basing him, though, so this could prove to be a bit of a problem. The rules for this Infested Terran only challenge is what you need to do is basically you can only kill your opponent with Infested Terrans. You can defend with Static Defense and Queens, but Mass Queens, not acceptable for you Zerg players out there who try to do that. Uh, special thanks especially to all of my screeners, including Miso, Jonathan, Wade... And Testin Plasma for their chance in getting back to me uh, with their replays. So, again, just fantastic. Them going through the time to go through all the submissions for One Trick Wednesday. If you'd like to get your cast or your replay cast for One Trick Wednesday, send them to falconpaladin at gmail.com with the subject of One Trick Wednesday. And I'll go ahead and figure it out. Uh, figure out what exactly you're talking about there. The other thing you need to keep in mind, and keep this in mind as the lair has already started for CLSS at 2 minutes and 13 seconds, is that you have 10 days from today. 10 days from today to do the One Trick Wednesday and send me your replays. Anything I get after 10 days, I can't include when I send it to my screeners. So just the timing, the way it works out, 10 days from now, which is going to be next, the week after this Friday, is what we're dealing with. So just keep that in mind. If you send it after, I'm not going to get it. It's not going to get screened. And please don't be sad. So Static Defense coming up here from CLSS, recognizing that's what he needs to do. This have static defense to live in this situation where there are lings coming out. Armelius not actually being very aggressive. And the queen does take down one of CLSS's overlords. Bad news bears on that one. We got a double extractor here from Armelius as well. And his lair's done at the same time. What is going on here? What is that evolution chamber coming in from Armelius? No sign of a macro hatch or a second base at all from our blue zerg player. Has a ton of lings out. Speed's not quite done yet. Which means CLSS has been left alone for quite a while in a ZVZ. He's got three spine crawlers up, which seems like a lot. But if there are like 30 Zerglings in your main, that doesn't seem like a whole lot when you're in that situation. So let's see if he gets his infestation pit out soon. Ah, it is on the way. It is on the way here below his main base for CLSS. And we are getting right on the way to where we want to be for this one trick Wednesday. So again, people vote on this. I take suggestions, put them in the comments if you have suggestions for the next one trick Wednesday. I'll add it to the list and the next poll will include them. You can vote on which one you think would be most interesting to see. And this one was infested Terrans only. Now this again does kind of make the other two races unable to participate in this one. Some of their other options have been a little bit uh, more race inclusive. I would say, wow, Armelius is one base infestation pitting. So, uh, don't worry, it's not always Urg, it's not always Terra, not always Protoss. We try to get a good, rounded effort for this sort of thing. Plus one me uh, melee attack coming in from our Amelius Infestation Pit on the way again for our Blue Zerg player. What is this dude doing? Is he going, like, Ultras on one base? He has a Roach Warren as well. This might not be the highest level example of One Trick Wednesday, but for an introduction, for an introduction, that is what we're going to roll with here. Evolution Chamber, done. More spine crawlers coming in. He is, CLSS is just worried that 30 roaches are on their way right now. It's four and a half minutes in. He's left his opponent entirely alone at this point in time, which is so bad. Burrow coming in for CLSS as well. Burrow and Fester is much better at throwing out Infested Terrans without dying, as it turns out. So that Roach Warren for Amelius is super late. He's going Hive. This dude is one base <laughs> hiving right now. What is going on? Hydralisk Den. 
on the way from Armelius. Is he going? Lurker, three infestors on the way for our Red Zerg player. CLSS, he is not getting pathogen glands, which he can't afford. But generally, if you want to make a lot of infestors and you need, or you need them to have energy as quickly as possible, you want to get this pathogen gland upgrade started first. And then once that's about halfway complete, you start your infestors. So they pop with that additional 25 energy, which again, doesn't seem like a lot. But if you have to wait, if you have to wait a long time, to throw out some infested Terrans, you will wish you had that upgrade. So here come the Lings for Armelius. Ooh, I don't know about this, man. I do not know about this from CLSS. These Lings, there are a lot of them. There's a full page, exactly one full page of Lings, which is 24. 24 Zerglings and some Roaches coming across as well. And finally expanding at five minutes is Armelius to his very safe, natural location. But uh, Lair is upgrading to a Hive. His Hive is complete. I really want to know what Armelius is doing right now. I'm actually fairly interested to see what his plan is if he has one at all he's making some hydras which is really good there's that pathogen glands for clss which will affect future infestors just not the ones that are out right now where are they in fact oh he's gonna overlord move them so he's got drop lord with speed moving across the map he's not gonna burrow at all he's just moving four infestors across the map as fast as he can fly lings and roaches sitting out here outside what they think is a third base for clss but there is no third base here I don't know exactly why he's being so uh, so tentative. He's got three Hydralisks moving across the map as well to join up with this Ling Roach group. But these Infestors continue to get closer and closer to the blue base. Any more Infestors on the way from CLSS? Let's take a look here. He has four. Production tab says no more. No more for the time being. He's just trying to drone up, trying to get spine crawlers at his natural base. See, this is what Static Defense does. It slows down your macro. So Static Defense, it slows you down if you have this much. I do like to have a little bit, but not a ton is not required. Overlord scouting in for CLSS. The Ling's rolling in here. Spine Crawlers must get to work. Spine Crawlers, and is there even a Queen here? There's not. So the Ling's trying to get a full surround. Spine Crawlers desperately trying to hold this. Queens are here from the natural base to assist as well. One Queen pops out, immediately gets surrounded and murdered. Roaches and Hydras, there's only two Spine crawlers remaining right now. This is looking really bad for our red Zerg player queens trying to hold it as best they can. Spine crawler hitting roaches for good amounts of damage. Drones forced to fight as well. Another spine crawler coming up back behind here, and CLSS completely forgot about his overlord on the other side of the map. He's not doing anything. Drone fighting, queen fighting, queen dies. These hydras hit really hard using their melee attack animations on the spine crawler, but it does pop and get a single hit off. Before it dies, killing one of these Hydralisks. Hydralisk versus Queen. Who's going to win that battle? I do not know, but here come the Burrow Infestors. There go the Infested Terrans getting tossed up here right inside the main base of our Amelius. And bam, going to town on that Queen. Changing their fire to drones. Are they trying to take down the Hive? They're trying to take down the Hive. Is there enough DPS on these dudes to take down this Hive? I do not know. This Hydra is still alive. This Hydra has 10 kills. For Armelius, he's going after the Infestation Pit, which is actually kind of incredible. Some of the uh, Infested Terrans are not focusing on the Hive. One at least is trying to hit this Extractor, which is kind of odd, but there it goes. Hive is gone. Infested Terrans are committing suicide at this point in time, and they have killed... What other was that building they killed there? Is that the Hydralisk Den? They got the Hydralisk Den, which is a pretty big deal. I'm liking that quite a bit. More Burrow Infestors moving out right now. There is one Spine Crawler. Holding the fort for CLSS. He did get some Infested Terrans to take out that one Hydralisk, but more Lings running across the map right now. Infested Terrans popping into the natural base of Armelius and trying to kill a Queen. They do kill the Queen. Armelius is down to 12 drones right now, you guys. These Lings for Armelius coming all the way back home. Can they get this thing done? Infested Terrans not doing very well against Lings and Hydras, as it turns out. Armelius does save his natural base. He's got eight drones in production. He's trying to redrone. He's trying to replant his hatchery inside his main base. The infester count is currently 14. Crikey, 14 infestors right now for Armelius. And here are infestors creeping along. Burrow moving their way into a position where they can actually hit. Where did these infestors go? So, have any infestors died for CLSS? No, he's lost spine crawlers and 18 drones, which is bad. Here come the Lings. I don't know what's going to stop this. This is looking really bad for CLSS. Single Spine Crawler trying to stop this thing. No. Nope. Trying to make Spine Crawlers a little bit too late for that. Not canceling them either. Just completely losing them straight up. Infestors are here inside the main base of Armelius, though. A lot of them actually. Seven Lings going to town on the main base of CLSS. Infested Terrans being thrown down. 
by the dozens, it feels like, here inside the main base. They're going to kill the spawning pool. They're going to kill the hatchery. And they're going to kill the roach horn and the evolution chamber and the infestation pit. This is looking really bad for the blue player, but he does have, again, just a bunch of links killing the spawning pool of his opponents. Hydras are here. Super dangerous. However, they are attacking directly into the spine crawler, which is bad news for them. But the links are going to get the lair. Here for CLSS inside his main base, but everything in the main for Armelius is gone except for except for two extractors. They got mutas and corruptors and roaches, but they don't have any detection. <gasps> they don't have any detection whatsoever. This is turning into a bit of a nail biter. Ladies and gentlemen, infestors coming into this natural base of Armelius, throwing down yet another group of infested Terrans, eight of them. 9, 10, 11, 12 more getting thrown out here as the energy is being found on these infestors. Can they take down? All of these units. Muta's flying in. I don't know that Muta is going to be a good idea against these infested Terrans. And not necessarily. They're trying to focus down the hatchery before they get the Mutas. And they get the hatchery. Big time move there by the infested Terrans. They do get killed by Broodlings and Mutas mostly. But now down to zero bases is Armelius. He has enough uh, money to actually re-pop one up there. There we go. Actually two if he wants. He still has 460 minerals after replanting his natural. Could replant his main if he so desired. But the problem is that there are infested Terrans everywhere. And the natural base, actually just mostly in the main base right now, and they just got cleaned up. So main base is gone for CLSS. He's got his natural, which he is trying to remake into a lair. And where else are we going here with this? More infested Terrans popping out, trying to kill some of these drones, trying to make sure this hatchery doesn't actually come up. The Muta's desperately trying to save the day here. Armelius down to 11 drones, but CLSS is down to 14 himself. Not a good number. Not a good number, and Ling's Roaches and Mulusks enough to kill the infested Terrans. So the seven infestors have a lot of kills to their names right now. 19 kills, 11 kills, mm, 4 kills, thrusting up more infested Terrans, trying to take down this Spire, which seems unnecessary as it is bleeding profusely, as it is not on creep. Trying to get rid of this Extractor, and bam, does take down the Spire. Mad to get the Extractor as well. Nothing left in the main base. For Armelius whatsoever here, it's natural. It's all that Armelius has. He just has the hatchery and an extractor for his buildings. If he loses these, he just straight up loses this game is what happens. So the Infestors are trying to regenerate more energy here. Trying to generate more and more energy to throw down just a huge swell of Infested Terrans. His replacement Infestation Pit is on the way as well. There we go. Infested Terrans going back behind the mineral line. Going to pick off a couple more of these drones. For Armelius. No, the Lings and the Mutas and the Roaches and the Hydras find them. They <laughs> find them and take them down. I am surprised Armelius hasn't thrown down a Spore Crawler at any point in this game yet. He knows there are Burrow and Infestors somewhere because Infested Terrans keep popping out. And uh, he isn't able to stop them because, well, you know, he can't see them. Which means they're Burrowed, which means detection is going to be great. Armelius is replanting his spawning pool right now. We have more Infestors on the way for CLSS yet. He has enough money to pop them out. He is a little bit Larva Starved. He only has three of them. More Infested Terrans here just trying to whittle down the count of Armelius' army. But I don't think it's working very well. These Hydras, these four Hydras have been here the entire time, it feels like. And they just refuse to die to these Infested Terrans. So lesson number one is probably going to be Infested Terrans are not very good. Uh, they don't scale. They don't get upgrades. They were nerfed. In a recent patch of StarCraft 2, maybe not recent, but uh, a couple patches ago anyway. So just not what you see a lot of. They can't really hold their own in a pitch battle in any sense. More Infestors showing up for CLSS, though. Four Infestors all with max energy. Oh, that's a lot. Infested Terrans cost 25 each. That's a lot of Infested Terrans. And more coming in. Yes, more Infestors popping in here. <laughs> Original 7 tossing in their Infested Terrans. And again, not really killing. Oh, they got two Mutas, though. Never mind, they got two mutas, which is extremely useful. And a roach. Vested Terrans, man, do holding they heard me bad mouthing them and they were like, no. We got this. Wow, they won that battle. They totally won that battle. Infested Terran land is here at the natural base of Armelius. So many infested Terrans. Almost a full page of infested Terrans. And that's it. Armelius with the rage quit. He's out. CLSS is victorious. <laughs> And he has left the game. Good job. Close. Very impressive victory indeed. Again, your opponent wasn't the greatest, but it's a good example for the first cast. The first uh, replay for this One Trick Wednesday was that. So well done. Well done. Well done not quitting when you lost your main. Showing some perseverance 
for sure. All right, so that's it for game number one of the One Trick uh, One Trick Wednesday. Yeah, One Trick Wednesday. We'll be back with game number two in just a second. Welcome back to our One Trick Wednesday, Falcon Paladin fans. This is going to be a game between Monkey Spawn X and Zero Dash Zero on Cactus Valley, the latter edition. In the top right side of the map, we have the red Zerg player. It is Zero Dash Zero. And his opponent, the blue Protoss player, it is Monkey Spawn X. All right, so I'm speeding it up because I understand it's going to take us a while to get to Infestors. And we know what the Zerg player is going to do here. He's going to play defensively. He's going to use Static Defense to try to stay alive as long as he can and attack to Infestor. So we don't need to really watch the early game too much. And uh, this compilation would be pretty long if I just straight up one times the speed of all the replays I'm going to cast. So we'll slow it down if things get interesting. But so far it's a hatch first from the Zerg player. Extractor pool, nothing too nuts there. Protoss player does have Gateway down. He's making a Zealot actually. A very early Zealot he's using to wall off the ramp, even though he didn't make his buildings to wall off the ramp. Seems odd. Seems odd to me. Drone is chasing Probe around in a race to the death. I don't know there's no way that Drone can see that Probe, right? No, can't see it, but it's going the same direction anyway. This is very interesting. So he's checking to see if his Protoss opponent is in the bottom left. It is not, so therefore it's in the top left. I hate it when you scout the last possible place, and that's where they are. A lot of Zealots. For monkey spawn, I don't know what he's doing here. It's an early zealot rush is not something I ever see in Legacy of the Voidcast anyway. Static defense has begun for 0-0. Zero zero. I just... Okay, zealots have made themselves clear by killing the scouting drone very quickly. And 0-0 uh, zero zero is like, oh, this is really... Is this a four gate? There's his third and his fourth gates. He's getting a warp gate. He's kind of four gating. What in the name of Fergus McDudson is going on here? He's sending out his Mothership Core. He's gotten Adept. He's, so he's going Adepts instead of Stalkers. But this is basically a four gate. He's got four gates. He's got Warp Gate Research coming up. He's going to come to the front here and try to kill his opponent. 0-0 zero zero is in a lot of trouble. He's got three Spine Crawlers and a couple Queens and a spore cr or Spine Crawler in his Mineral Line as well. And Zealot taking out the Creep Tumor. Nicely focused down there as we slow things down. Coming on in. The Spine Crawler's ready to rock. Three minutes and 59 seconds into this thing. And Spines stab, stab, stab. Queen's trying to get the Mothership Core as well. Can they get it? No. I don't know if they can. Spore Crawler coming up for 0-0 zero zero along his line of Spine Crawlers. Because, again, Mothership Core is a problem. We want to deal with her faster rather than later. And Monkey Spawn X still has not expanded. <laughs> Still is not expanded at this point. I don't know what this Protoss player is doing. Who are these people? Okay, there's the expansion. Ugh. Big weight off my shoulders. That feels so much better. Queen's looking great for 0-0. Zero zero. Hasn't really gone mass queen. He's got four for two bases, which seems reasonable enough to fit within the rules of our little challenge here. He's getting a third and a fourth extractor. He needs that gas. There's the lair just now beginning for 0-0 zero zero and kind of sitting at the front slow warping stuff in this is why the warping times were changed uh, just for this exact reason for open harassment the warping times are slow adept's gonna walk right past those spine crawlers oh crikey that's bad that's really bad adept's getting inside the main base and don't engage with the spines okay one engage with the spines and now she's dead but now there are five three adepts inside the main base of 0-0 four queens are desperately trying to kill them can't make any zerglings can't do anything but try to queen these things down. Losing so many adepts right now. Queen's getting one of the adepts. Psionic transfer has begun. One of the adepts is trapped a little bit. She might get killed before they can retreat as well. And she does. Oh, they just retreated to this left side. Never mind. She's alive with four hit points. Four hit points. Can't exactly walk down this ramp either. So kind of stuck in the main for a little bit. And actually just zipping around inside the main base. Which is really strange for these adepts. High ground harassing on this extractor. And then canceling the psionic transfer, so they're still here. Dude, this one is very weak. Getting focused. Good job. Focusing down the weakened ones is 0-0. Zero zero. Exactly what you want to see there. Psionic transferring around. Just kind, of <laughs> just kind of having a good time right now. Is our Protoss player. He still has a bunch of zealots and adepts at the front door that he's not using. For reasons that are not entirely clear to me. But it is allowing 0-0 zero zero, the time that he needs to not die is what it does so what are we looking at seven dead adepts 14 dead uh drones no queens died these guys are heroes two kills two kills zero zero kills and i think one of these spine crawlers has a couple of kills as well indeed it does 
All right, so big army sitting out front, uh, actually making a double robotics facility right outside the front door of 0-0. What is this? What is this tomfoolery? I don't understand. Taking a third base, 0-0, and a fourth base further down the right side of the map here. Zero Dash is macroing his heart out while under direct assault at his front door. He recognizes, if I'm going to do this challenge, if I'm going to do this challenge, I need to expand. I need a lot of gas, and if I die in the process, so be it. It's kind of like my strategy for <laughs> when uh, for when I'm playing FFA. So here we go. More adepts coming in. The zealots do not want to engage for whatever reason. This is actually nine adepts, which is a big number of adepts. The queen count, not necessarily enough to handle this thing. There are five of them. And here we go. Yeah, the adepts very smartly killing queens now. Transfuse, transfuse, keeping the queen alive. Oh, one more queen shows up to the party. The adepts decide perhaps trying to kill the queens is a futile effort. We're going to kill drones instead. There is a sp double spore crawler here in the natch or the main mineral line for 0 0. I'm not sure if that's an accident or what. You think you'd want maybe a, a spine and a spore, but nope. That's what it is. Adepts just trying to ignore the fact they're getting stabbed in the back of their heads by queens, which is really bad news. Infestation pit. Finally, in the middle of all of this, Zero Dash is going for his infestation pit. Never mind. He changed his mind. He canceled it. Perhaps the drone who is going to build the infestation pit is dead. All right, so ade two adepts getting killed as they're trying to sonic transfer away here into the natural base. Spine crawler can hit one of them. Just barely. Another oh, walks right into those again. Completely toast. So adepts look like they are retreated at this point in time. Immortal production has begun by monkey spawn. Crikey. This is great. We're going to speed up again just a little bit here. Still no infestation pit. Out of zero dash. Come on, man. We need you to... I need you to tech up. I know you need more drones. I totally get that. I really do, but I um, need you to tech really hard. Six queens, two spine crawlers at the front. Uh, oh, no. Third base gets scouted. Oh, sentries and zealots and adepts killing this queen. The queen's coming in, trying to deal with this thing. And again, the Protoss player is kind of assisting him. There we go. Now bringing in units. Oh, the immortals are here now as well. The queen's desperately trying to kite as best they can, but I think this third base is toast. Drones need to go. Drones need to go. There's no saving the third base. Infestation pit's about to complete for zero dash. And, I mean, we're, we're done. We're done. Third base is gone. We will not even consider it right now. Monkey Spawn is sitting on two bases, which is totally exciting stuff to be sure. Third base explodes for zero dash. Fourth base, thankfully, still unknown to the Protoss player. That is good news for our Zerg. More spines coming up at the front door. Of zero dash. Static defense is going to have to save him. But against immortals, I just don't know what they can do. Pathogen glands on the way from zero dash. That's what we're talking about. Oh, but he already started his infestors. Dang it. Dang it. Uh, so you want to wait till this is about halfway complete and then do your infestors. But it's really too late for zero dash to hear me. Double macro hatch coming in from zero dash. He is having a hard time spending his money. Immortals coming in against these spine crawlers. And actually, spine crawlers shoving the Protoss player away. I don't. I don't necessarily agree with that. This immortal count is getting really high, though, for our friend Monkey Spawn. If he moves in at any point here, Infestor's out for zero dash. Here we go, Infestor group. Are they going to try to? Are going to try to assist the spine crawlers with infested Terrans? I think is what's going to go on here. He doesn't want to engage directly just with infested Terrans. That would be bad news. Fourth base done for zero dash, making a fifth base as well down this left side. Monkey Spawn is checking for a base in the very bottom right corner. It's the only place that zero dash is not. Along the right side of this map, here we go. Immortals sneaking on in with Adept. Guardian Shield is up. Infested. Four infested Terrans thrown down. Getting focused down immediately. And a huge concave of infested Terrans are out. And they force Monkey Spawn back. Nope, he attacks directly into them and then decides to retreat. Mother's ship core down to 4 HP and does get picked off. Big pick off. Big pick off by Zero Dash, making sure that happened. No recall available to you, Protoss player. Checking to see if the third base is alive. The answer is no, but he, how did he find out about the fourth base? He found out about the fourth base, killing overlords, wandering right on down here and says, Oh, free hatchery. Thank you for playing. I have so many immortals. It doesn't even matter. Eight immortals. <sighs> Eight Immortals, does he know about this fifth base? He does know about the fifth base. Oh, that scouting probe is such a snitch. Such a snitch. Two queens trying to save it, but no. Zero Dash is stuck on two bases. Does have a lot of Infestors, though. 18 Infestors for Zero Dash. Trying to summon some Infested Terrans out and killing several sentries, actually. Now trying to kill this forward stuff, killing the pylon of Monkey Spawn. 
Here come the Immortals, though. Immortals and Sentries and Guardian Shield is up. Infested Terrans being tossed down everywhere. I don't know that Monkey Spawn knows what's going on here. Again, has not actually thrown in an Observer yet. Oh, the surround! The full surround of Infested Terrans. The Immortals can't go anywhere. Look at them die so quickly. Two of these Infested Terrans, only three, two Immortals remaining. They are forced to retreat after watching their brethren die like so many cattle. And spreads further creep to Zero Dash. So his third base is coming back up. His Infested Terran army is rather scary. He's up to 18 total Infestors. He's making eight more. Eight more. Forward robotics facilities or Monkey Spawn are toast. He's got a third base coming up as well, which seems rather nice. Uh, if you're the Protoss player, you want to have the three bases. But what you need here, okay, I kind of like Phoenix in this situation. Does he seriously not have any observers? He does not have any observers. So a key here, if you're going Infested Terran, is that your opponent has no detection. Uh, it really helps immensely in those situations. Look at all of these Protoss <laughs> Infestors trying to sneak on up here. Phoenix flying in the main base of Zero Dash, picking up Queens, murdering them. And the queens just can't do really enough about it here. Uh, flying around, killing overlords, killing overseers. There is some static defense around in weird places, which makes it harder for the phoenix to do this. More spore crawlers coming up as well. Phoenix count going down. Here come the infestors. All a million of them. 24? Is that 8 times 3? Is 24 plus 2? 26 infestors just going to town on monkey spawn's natural base. Bam, 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 bam. Oh my gosh, it's never ending. He does save some energy for other stuff. Taking down a cannon, going after these pylons, going after the main nexus. There are void rays, but oh crikey. The void rays don't have any detection at all. So many infested terrans being thrown on. Dealing with this void ray army is definitely a priority. If you're zero dash zero and all the void rays die, look at the anti-air on these dudes. Man, doing eight damage. With a weapon speed of 0.61 and a range of five, they are good, they're just slow is the thing. You can run away from them, which makes them terrible. Also, they obviously expire after a certain amount of time. But Gateways getting murdered here. This main base is looking bad. Monkey Spawn X says, I'm so confused right now. <laughs> I'm so confused right now. And he leaves the game. Monkey Spawn's out and 0-0 zero zero is victorious. Absolutely hilarious. What a ridiculous, ridiculous game there. Whew. All right, so again, a bit of a lower level option, which is okay. We have all levels here in One Trek Wednesday, but it's proved to be viable at the lower levels. Let's see if we can find one a little bit higher coming up next, which we will see in just a second. Welcome back to One Trick Wednesday. This game will be between Just Will and Saints War Cry on Cactus Valley, the latter edition. In the top right side of the map, throwing out the good luck, have fun, is the Red Zerg player, Saints War Cry. And in the bottom left side of the map, throwing out the have fun Winky's tongue face <laughs> is Just Will, who has a spinning marine logo from StarCrafts, which is a wonderful thing. I love StarCraft so much by Carbot Animations. Check them out if you have some chance to watch some really funny short animation clips based on StarCraft. Wonderful times indeed. Again, we're going to speed this up to two times just because we know what's going on. We know what's happening in the first stages of this game. Extractor spawning pool. Saints War Cry is going to try to rush rush to infestation pit as fast as he possibly can scouting is juiced well top left and wrong place and a reaper on the way a reaper coming in do we have to use our reaper we might have to use our reaper name list you guys gonna have to do it so let's pull it up real real fast should not take too long to find here on the phone and we don't this is pewdiepie the 18th it was in roman numerals it took me a second <laughs> <laughs> X-V-I-I-I. -I -I. All right, so yes, it is PewDiePie, the 18th, the Reaper. I don't know how he got in a Reaper suit, but he's a descendant of PewDiePie, one of the biggest YouTubers in all of the world. If he's not the biggest, he might be the biggest YouTube personality. Anyway, the camera's having a hard time keeping up with him. He's moving so quickly, but he can stand right in here against this queen, take several shots to the face, kill absolutely nothing, and then come down to the natural base, try to kill some things, and then back on out and wait for combat drugs. To heal himself up. That is absolutely <laughs> weird. That was a weird Reaper, to be sure. Meta uh, Widow Mines are out for Juiced Will. Reactor tossing down on the barracks as well. Spreading creep between the main base and the natural base is this queen. Spine crawlers on the way, trying to be in positions. Oh, look at this quick infestation pit. Three minute 
Infestation Pit from Saints Warcry. He has this figured out. I would say he's got it figured out at this point in time. A drone comes into the uh, main base of Juiced Will and gets murdered by a Widow Mine. Is there an expansion? No, no. A one basing Terran. Oh, no, he does have an expansion coming up. Okay, so there's a command center on the way here inside the main base. It is being constructed. Probably will land it eventually, but this is late. It is a late expand from Juiced Will. All right, PewDiePie, the 18th. What you going to do? Creep has come up, bubbled from the ground beneath you under your feet the first infestors are out for saints war cry keep it up dude let's do this thing infestor count is sitting at four he does not have the pathogen glands upgrade he didn't have time he had to rush to infestor to defend against whatever the heck the terran player is doing it's going to be a double widow mine drop well bam getting six kills on one and one on the other just well throws out again the tongue face thing oh what a bummer what a bummer we do, in fact, have an Overseer on the way, so Infested Terrans could be used to pick these off, or some Static Defense, if that's what is in your mind. An Injection would not be a miss here from Saints Warcry either. Both of his hatcheries seem a little bit low on the macro style of things, but if you're going Mass Infester, maybe you don't need that much. So Queen trying to kill this Widow Mine. Widow Mine might get... Oh, hit the Queen and hit one of the drones. So seven kills on that Widow Mine. I am... Where did that Metavac go? Matter of fact, that dropped it. Did it die? There's no way it died. No, it's right here. Oh, it's up here. It could save it. But Juice Will does not even try to save it at all. Three more infestors on the way. They will have pathogen glands. PewDiePie, <laughs> the 18th, just dies, sadly, here at the front door of our Zerg player, Saints Warcry. What else you got for me, Saints Warcry? Let's see some more of that grit. Mm -hmm, working on Zerg Ground Carapace level 1. Oh, never mind. They will not come out. They won't come out with that upgrade, unfortunately, because it's not done yet. And they popped. Hmm. Timing a little bit off on that one. Medivac finally retreating. Finally getting the heck out of there. Recognizing this is not a safe place to be. If you're a Medivac on the Zerg side of things, got Marines, got tanks, got Marauders here for Juiced Will. Going to try to move it out. Try to murder as many things as he possibly can. Creep spread continuing for White Saints Warcry. Looking fantastic that way. There are seven infestors with four more on the way. These guys will have the pathogen glands upgrade because it's done. Burrow's done as well. It is time for our hit squad to move out. Let's see what they can do against Terran. They seem a little bit uh, unwilling to move off the creep, which I can understand. It's comforting on the creep if you're a Zerg player. It's where you were born. It's where your home is. But at the same time, <laughs> at the same time, I don't know, man. Trying to hold the central zone like a watchtower, which you can't do if you're burrowed, right? So what is holding that? What the what? Is that held? That's not held. Why is, is it always so sparkly? I'm asking questions because I don't, I don't know. It's a dude thing. All right, here we go. Moving out is Just Will's army. And Fester's saying, you know what? You go right by. We're just going to let you pass. That is a lot of stuff, though, and here comes our Infestor Hit Squad. Coming right on in, going to toss down some Infested Terrans here into the natural base surrounding that command center. Trying to make sure to take down the tank as well. And then the Infestor is getting right on up. Oh, no, the Supply Depot is lowered. Here we go, lifting his own Orbital Command in the main base as well, but no base race in it. Is Juiced Well coming into the natural base, murdering that. Infested Terrans murdering everything they can. Inside the main, the command center is trying to fly for safety right now, but I don't know about this, man. I really don't know about this one. Taking direct fire. Again, a lot of DPS on these dudes. They can't move fast, but they can hit hard. They can hit at a range as well. Is that orbital command going to be burning by the time it gets over to this safe area? The answer is... So dang close, but no! 583 hit points on that, dude. This might turn into a base race that the Terran player can turn into a draw just because this Orbital Command is not burning and I don't know what Saints Warcry can do to reach it. Marines Marauders tanks coming right in here to Saints Warcry's main base. He's losing so much stuff right now. He does have a third base, which is nice. Going to slow down the death of everything that he owns. But Infested Terrans digging down all the production facilities of Just Will. I mean, the Terran player is dead. It's just a question of whether or not Saints Warcry is dead as well. Infestation Pit is done, and that's it for the main base for the Zerg player, except for a couple creep tumors that Just Will can't really clear because it doesn't have any landed orbital commands, as it turns out. Infested Terrans versus Marines and Marauders. Look at that surround on that Marauder. Poor guy. The other three walking into the circle willingly. 
getting themselves murdered to death. So it's 71 to 37 total supply. Just has 71 supply. Wow. 11 SCVs and 7 drones. So again, his army is here. It is big, it is strong, but it has nothing with which to detect these infestors. Overseer following the orbital command around. This might turn into a situation where Just just can't see the infestors and it turns into bad news bears for him. This command center is going to be burning. Yep, down into the red. Again, I'm not sure if the Infestitarians will kill Oh, they kill it. Alright, so that's dead. That is only one base remaining for our Blue Terran player. The Red Zerg Saints Warcry does have a hatchery coming up, uh, coming up in the top left. Which is very interesting as well. We've got tanks going to town on this third base of Saints Warcry. But this final... Oh, he throws down a contamination. <laughs> Contaminate on the final orbital command. Does that mean he can't move if it's contaminated? Can't train new units and can't... Oh, it can move. Okay. So it's moving, but it's on fire. And it can't see where it's going because it has gross stuff all over it. Oh, that's one of the grossest animations in StarCraft 2, actually. So this orbital command is going to die. And at this point, I just feel like Saints Warcry can kind of leisurely pick off the remaining buildings of Just Will and not really worry about it. So orbital command down to 1-9. It's going to die. Gonna die. There are five SCBs on the ground for our Terran player, but I don't know where the heck they are. Okay, so here's three of them in the main base. I got a barracks flying off to this corner for just a while. <laughs> Infestors finding a group of Marines and Marauders, and they decide to go for it. They decide to chuck down as many Infestitarians as they can, and by as many as they can, and probably mean not as many as they can. He wants to kill buildings. That needs to be his priority right now. He's trying to get this one barracks that's trying to fly away. Here we go. Blah, 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 blah. What's he going for here? Targeting down the starport? It's kind of whatever. Not really target firing anything. Oh, shoot. Saints Warcry's final base in the top left has been discovered. Marines, Marauders, and tanks taking this sucker down. And is that the final building? Oh, it is. Saints Warcry is defeated. He does a lot of damage, but he ends up losing nonetheless. Look at this thing. Uh, yeah, he's able to kill 28 SCVs, a tank, a Reaper, two Marauders, eight Marines, and every single command center that Justwell had, he just lost the base race. That final base did get discovered. I feel like the Infestitarians had more energy on them. They could have tossed down a few more Infestitarians, but a little too slow to make it happen. That's okay. That's okay. Good use of the Infestitarian. <laughs> In this match, for sure, Saints Warcry, even though you lost, it was a fun one. Okay, so we'll come back with our next game of the One Trick Wednesday by Falcon Paladin in just a second. Welcome back to One Trick Wednesday from Falcon Paladin. This will be a game between Dead Soldier and Sam Tenu on Honor Grounds, the latter edition. In the top right side of the map, we have the Red Protoss player. It is Sam Tenu. And in the top left side of the map, we have the Blue Zerg player. It is Dead Soldier. Special thanks again to my screener, Nick, who actually got back his submissions just as I was casting this. <laughs> Cast a little bit earlier than I said I would, so didn't catch him in the first one. But again, thanks, Nick, for all the work that you do. I definitely took his suggestions into consideration for these final games. And uh, that's going to be a good one. So Dead Soldier versus Sam Tanu again, speeding things up. Hatch first. Out of Dead Soldier into an Extractor into a pool. 17, 17, 17. Just save, do pretty much whatever you want with it. Except super duper early aggression that most players can hold. So this is a diamond level. This might be the highest one we've cast so far. So we'll keep in mind. We'll keep that in mind as we're watching this here. I really got to like personally challenge some more Masters and GM players to do these things. We get some good submissions from them. Uh, for the first one, for Vikings only, uh, we got Jason actually involved in it. And it was that was a really fun experience on a couple of those replays so again i'm not uh, discouraging people of lower levels to submit replays i'll definitely cast some of those but i would like a couple i want to see some gm guys tackle this and see what they can do so i'm going to personally send that challenge out as soon as we figure out what it is at the end of this cast all right so gateway gateway expansion on the way from sam tenu this guy seems to know what he's doing which is good really bad news for Dead Soldier at this point in time. A macro hatch coming up for Dead Soldier inside his own main base. Instead of just going for a third. I don't know what... This is This is for defense. He's like trying to wall... Who might be trying to wall off. Which kind of makes kind of makes sense here. He is going for a quick lair. 
Okay, so spine crawler coming up. Probe comes in and says, Do I see anything weird? Yeah, what the heck is that? Why is there a macro hatch instead of a third base? I, I think the answer might be an attempt at a wall. I really do. Infestation pit on the way does get scouted by Sam. Great scout by Sam. Spine crawler kills him though. Sorry, Probe. You scouted and then got murdered. Oracle. Oracle coming in here from Sam Tanu. Do we want to name this? No, we're going to save this Oracle name for something awesome. We have a good one. Good one ready to go. But I'm not going to use it here. Just, just not going to do it. Thanks to those of you who have been submitting names for the Oracle Name Research Fund. Uh, it's been it's been some good ones for sure. Stalkers and Adepts moving out across the map. We do have, again, it's a wall of three spine crawlers. Can Adepts shade through here is the question of the day, and I don't actually know. Oracle getting in does get eight kills. Eight kills? The natural base? Crikey, that's very impressive indeed. Ford Pylon coming up from Sam Tenu as well. Void Rays coming in. Sam Tenu feeling... Really aggressive here, but three spines at the top, including an Infestor here that could throw down some Infested Terrans if she felt like it. I assume Infestors are girls. Am I? Why do I feel that? I don't know. I've assigned genders to certain Zerg units that I have no real logical reason for doing that. It's just... just kind of feels that way. Does it make that make any sense to you? I hope it does. Third Nexus warping in from Sam Tainu. Infestor count is at three, which is a good number. It's a goodly number, but it's not an incredible number. Void Ray, if he tries to come in here, he's going to get lots of Infested Terrans to the face. Slow Warpin at the front from Sam Tainui. And who are these players that do Slow Warpins at the front without gateway support? It's very interesting to me for sure. Another Stargate coming up. Is our Oracle still getting kills? No. Has eight kills, and that's about it. Two Queens and a Spore Crawler enough to shove her away for sure. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. All right, Stalkers. Uh, stasis war thrown up here by Sam Tainu as well. Just making infestors. Dead soldier doing what he was told to do by the Falcon Paladin. And so far he's alive. He's alive and not dead, but I don't really like where this is going. It's 102 to 97 total supply. So dead soldier looking okay. He's not dead by any means, but man, these, uh, these stasis wards doing great. Oh, drones come in and trigger one of the stasis wards. <laughs> Right in view of this army, that's got to be the worst, right? You're frozen in time, and all you can see is the Protoss units that will murder you as soon as you come out of being frozen. Yeah, not great. Not a great experience at all. As Sam Tenu does not want to come up that ramp. He is sitting here making sure that Dead Soldier doesn't get himself a third base. Oracle gets picked out of the sky by the many queens that Dead Soldier has. He has nine of them. It's a super duper big number for sure. Uh, third hatch attempted to be thrown down here. By Dead Soldier. Infestors. Oh, catching the Infestors in the Stasis Ward. But Queens with the Infested Terrans coming along the backside. Actually doing pretty well here. Some Adepts do manage to get inside the main. Everything else is dead. Oh, a couple Stalkers still alive here as well. Queen. Mass Queen. Infested Terrans being thrown out. What looks like slow motion because we're back down to one times speed. Well, faster speed is what it is anyway. Infested Terrans trying to hatch in places where they can do this against the adepts and ba -ba 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 -ba, trying to brick trying to brick them in a little bit here infested terrence is pinning them up against the wall a lot of dead stuff but these adepts are still alive there are still five adepts here with a stalker inside the natural base of dead soldier bad news man mothership core is here trying to kill stuff i don't know what she's doing she's late she's late to the party and finally, Infested Terrans and Queens win the day. So what we've lost here was 44 drones, 5 Queens, in exchange for 15 Adepts, 4 Stalkers, 6 Void Rays, an Oracle, and 2 High Templar. There were High Templar in that army? Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. So uh, Infested Terran group, of uh, which there are 16 moving across the map right now. They are burrowing. Ooh, High Templar coming across. Do you want to pick those off? I would pick those off if I was Dead Soldier, but he doesn't want to reveal his location. He wants to be very sneaky and very stealthy about this. There are cannons here, though, for Sam Tanu. Get out. Get out of the range of the cannons. One of the Infestors has to die for them to pull out range there. Uh, the You know what would be really good is feedback. Feedback on these dudes would be quite incredible. More High Templar here. Do they have Storm? Are they even researching Storm? No. Why do you have so many High Templar? Hasn't made any Archons with them either. I think this is a good spot to infest a Terran, Dead Soldier. What do you say? It is. It is. Falcon and throwing down a whole ton of infested Terrans. Bam. They're starting to hatch now. Some of them dying while they're still in eggs. Void Rays do not want to fight this. They decide to retreat. 
And Fested Terrans going after Static Defense, going after Pylons. Photon Overcharge does not last long against Infested Terrans, as it turns out. Voider is taking direct damage from these dudes. Look at how quickly they die when they fly over them, or even when they don't. Archons do pop out, but look at just like Marine versus Archons. It's exactly what this is. They're Marines. They just happen to be infested. The third base is now completely gone for the Sam Tenu, and third next is going to die, and that's it. Sam Tenu decides he can't hold against this many infestors. He doesn't have anything left. He has a Tempest remaining. He has a lot of money in the bank, but he doesn't quite know what to do with this and just decides to leave. <laughs> All right, uh, great one. Great job there by Dan Soldier. Um, that's going to be it for this game. We'll wrap up with our final game of One Trick Wednesday coming up in just a second. Welcome back to the final game of the One Trick Wednesday Challenge. This will be a game between Seji M and Demi on Cactus Valley, the latter edition. In the top right side of the map, we have the Red Zerg player. It is Demi with a little queen Carbot Animations logo spinning above. That is a good one, like waving. Hey, guys. Hey, I'm a queen. And in the top left side of the map, we have the blue Protoss player. It is Seji M with the Terran floating logo. Interestingly enough, this dude could be, uh, could kind of be all about just going random, which I definitely respect here. Scouting with two probes. He really wants to know where the Zerg player is on this map, so he is sacrificing two workers early to get that done, which I got to respect. I got to say I respect that. Hatch on the way from Demi Extractor. Already done. Once that gas early... So as to upgrade it to a lair and to an infested infestation pit uh, very quickly as well. Pylons thrown up here. Is he trying to cannon rush? What the? He is. He's trying to cannon rush. Oh, no. Our Zerg player has to defend this without any lings. Oh, uh, this is bad news. So many drones being pulled off here. But he is killing cannons, which seems pretty good. He really wants to kill the pro, but he's having a hard time with it. As it turns out, does kill one of those. He's forced to pull pretty much everything that he has to stop this. Oh, he does pick off the probe with two drones. Nicely done. Nicely done, Demi. He lost a ton of mining time there, but two cannons, a pylon, and a probe were lost by Seji. So, Spinecrawler coming up, recognizing he can't use lings to kill this. Can't use lings to kill these pylons, so he's going to have to make static defense to make it happen. Another probe coming in actually maybe wants to complete the work that his earlier friend <laughs> started. <laughs> Oh, how bad luck is it to run against a cannon rushing Protoss when you're trying to go infested Terrans only? That's bad luck, dude. I don't like it. Spinecrawler, pa -pa, pa -pa, taking down a cannon. Yes, don't build your cannons in a range of spines. What are you doing? Pro tip of the day. Don't build cannons in range of spine crawlers, Dude, wow. That's a lot of lost stuff. Resources lost here. 974 for Seji and zero for Demi right now. We're going to make that 1,000 with the loss of that one, aren't we? Uh, yeah, one, 1,074 done. Zealots on the way from Seji. This might be a cannon rushing player who doesn't know quite what to do when the cannon rush doesn't work. But a ring of spines inside the main base for Demi right now. Throwing up additional pylons far away from the creep. He's just, is he just messing with this dude? I feel like he's kind of, <laughs> kind of just messing with this dude. Can, he's cannon rushing the front door of a Zerg. I just don't. I don't understand. Spine, spine, spine. Defending with spines. I mean, I guess if the Protoss player is investing this much into these cannons, then might as well invest a lot into spines as well while trying to get a lair, while trying to get as much gas as possible. He's at 19 drones, which is a good number compared to the 15 of his opponent. The spines have popped for Demi. I just don't know what this cannon rush is going to do. What an absolutely silly game this is. <laughs> Absolutely silly. All right, Zealot Kabam wanders into the spine crawlers and dies. Uh, more cannons coming up for Seji. I don't, I don't understand why you're doing this or what you're possibly hoping to accomplish, unless you're sending Zealots into their deaths, which you're not, which is good, which is actually really good to see. Zealots coming in for the gateways. Warp gate research is not done, actually not even started yet, which is mega exciting. And just trying to cannon rush a Zerg player. I don't. I don't know what else to say at the situation. Evolution Chamber on the way. Infestation Pit done for Demi as well. And it's just a bit of a stalemate here. I don't actually... How's, Demi might have to fly these infestors out of here. And that is going to be a drop lord. Okay, so yes. He's not going to bother with these cannons at the front. He's going to fly his infestors directly across the map. And try to see what they can do that way. Three queens at this natural base and not one of them is injecting... 
Yes, you got it. Inject, you guys. Ready, set, inject. No, no. All right. All right. That's totally fine. Totally totes goats. Fine. Got can Again, are you doing more cannons? Nope, it's another gateway. Do you have warp gate? Working on warp gate. Okay. At least he's working on warp gate now. Is Seji. Really good news. 34 to 20 harvesters. Demi has a nice lead. Has a ton of investors. And by that, I mean four with three more on the way. Making overseers. Making drop lords. Uh, stuff tried to fly over this way and got killed, I suppose. Yeah, cannons, man. Mothership core trying to bait units into these cannons is what she's doing. But the queens can hit her without her really doing much of anything else. So, I don't know about this. I don't know about this strategy from our friend <laughs> CG right now. I assume it's Seiji, 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 something like that. Infested Terran's going down. They're going to try to break this with Infested Terran. So free unit, pretty good. One cannon dies. Zealot's wandering in here. But the cannon and Infested Terran spam is just destroying them. These ground units don't know what they're doing. Sentry's dying. Stalker's dying as well. Photon Overcharge does come up and does do some damage. Against these dudes, finally all the Infested Terrans are dead. About half of the fortifications of Seji are dead now, which is bad news. But Queens versus Void Ray, who's also shown up to the party. We're looking okay. We're looking okay. Is it time to move out? Time to move out. Loading up four Infestors inside the Overlord. Time to move on out of there and see what they can do. Void Ray picks off a Creep Tumor, which is nice. Spore Caller moving a little bit closer to try to deal with that Void Ray who moves away in response. Come on, dude. You can do this thing. You can move right on out. Getting a fast warping of Zealots here is Seiji. Just really likes him. Really likes his Zealots. Got another base coming up from the Seiji as well. And the defense line for Demi looks pretty good. Got three Spine Crawlers. Got three Queens. Not a massive group of defense by any means, but the drop is moving. The drop is moving across the top side of the map. The Infestors are inside the Overlord. Or are they gonna they're gonna try to go they're gonna try to go come on man you can do this thing you can do this thing and uh, drop one two three four gonna try to knock down this natural base at the very least there's the burrow everybody gets burrow move which is just a great choice it's a wonderful choice there's a cannon on the top of this ramp though uh, get out of there oh no lost one the zealot finishing it off He's trying to send infested terrans up the ramp to deal with that stupid cannon Zealot dies very quickly. Cannon does get... No pylon. Oh, the pylon powering a lot of this stuff is dead. Excellent target firing there, actually. And the Antifacet Herons waltz on in to the main base of Seji, which is super oversaturated with probes. And going to take his time leisurely destroying it with the infested Terran. <laughs> Third base is down below for Demi. He did manage to drop a drone down here. And, yep, infested Terran's killing so many probes. Nine probes. Getting killed there. Coming to the natural base to start mining, which was where they should have been in the first place as they were super oversaturated inside the main, but that's A-OK. -okay. Six more infestors on the way for Demi. He's got a full 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 of them here at the front door. He probably could be using them to some extent. Probes coming to the front line for Seji to join the fight. Oh, because guess what? There are infestors here as well. Infested Terrans. And Static Defense and Queen trying to go for it here. It's just not going to happen. The Void Ray is not lasting any more than a second or two. Mothership Core dead. Cannons taking direct shots to the face. Woo, look at these shots. Infested Terrans being thrown from every which direction. And that front is gone. Seji says, gosh, that's a lot of Infested Terrans. And that is correct. It is a lot. Okay, he didn't say that part. He just said, gosh. But there's an implication there. An implication, that's what he's talking about. How many did you do? The answer is 24. 24, and there's the good game from Seiji. Cannon here, trying to deal with these Infestors, but, I mean, we're looking at 13 to 33 Harvesters, 13 to 89, a lot, says Demi. <laughs> and that's it. Seiji defeated, and Demi is victorious in our last silly game from One Trick Wednesday. And we're going to let, and there we go, he's out. I was going to let him finish that up in peace, but... That is it. Okay, so that's the end of the compilation, which means it's time to announce our next One Trick Wednesday. Which, hang on, how does this work? Yeah, this is how this works. So our next One Trick Wednesday will be ghost only, except for static defense. So you can make missile turrets and planetary fortresses, and that's it, period. Then ghosts after that. Upgrade your ghost, whatever, get nukes. You can use nukes, that's totally fine too. But it's going to be ghost only, so... 
Send me your ghost only replays to falconpaladin at gmail.com with the subject of One Trick Wednesday. I'll put another straw poll in the description here for the next week after that. The next One Trick Wednesday after this one, it's gonna it's a weird thing, but you know what I'm talking about. So next one is ghost only. I'll try to contact again some of my higher level buddies to get a ghost only replay at their level of StarCraft 2 done. But that's gonna be it for me today. So this has been Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another edition of One Trick Wednesday. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, and Patreon, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.